Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. Today, we're going to be talking about magic, money, and spirituality, and some other deep things. This show has been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award and listed in Welt Magazine as the top 20 best podcasts to listen to. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work all over the world. So check them out for products, programs, or become a facilitator at drdanehere.com or accessconsciousness.com. I myself run a visibility hub and I coach people just like you to write a highly engaging book. I also take your book, Fully Done For You, to a guaranteed international best-selling book status. And I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and coached for while you're doing it so you get massive results. I've got a gift for you so you can learn how to be really visible at a time right now when the world definitely needs your message and your light. So learn how my gift to you. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. And today I'm very excited because my guest is Conjure Queen. She's an international public speaker, spiritual advisor, mentor, holistic healer. And with her controversial discussions, compassion for her community and carefree down to earth Brooklyn attitude, people naturally gravitated towards her message and her YouTube channel exploded. Today, Conjure Queen integrates her own spiritual journey and personal life experiences to help inspire, motivate, and educate millions of people around the world towards truth, freedom, wisdom, and love. You can learn more about her at IamConjureQueen.com. And with that, I welcome Conjure Queen to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you here. It's so great to be on the channel. Thank you so much for having me, Debbie. Yeah, it's really a pleasure. And it's been so cool researching you. Like, you are interesting, woman. And I just want to say we have a few things in common besides being deeply spiritual, both New Yorkers, both born under the sign of cancer. So okay. this should be a heartfelt conversation with attitude. <laughs> it's going to be deep. I can't wait. Yeah, I like that. And that, I was so curious, Conjure Queen, because I even looked that name up and that has really interesting roots, right? Talk, can you just talk about your name first? Sure. So it's interesting how the name Conjure Queen came to me, right? Like I remember one time I was just meditating and the name like Conjure Queen came up and I'm like Conjure Queen. It sounds like it got a cool ring. So I'm big into like etymology, like looking into the root meaning of words because, you know, words are spells. And so when you look up the word conjure, it really means to like create your own reality or to muster something up like alchemy and queen just being like, OK, like the queen on the chessboard, like she moves everywhere. She's a powerful piece. And so I'm like, OK, like I am the creator of my reality. I am the queen of my reality and I'm not going to let anything outside of me dictate how I should live, how I should be. So thus came the name Conjure Queen. And I just started teaching people how to create their own reality. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That was powerful. I wrote that down. Words are spells. I love that. And I love the etymology of things too. I find that really fascinating. And so were you always of the queen? Did you always embody that or did you have a journey to get here and become the Contra Queen? <sighs> well, it was a journey. I mean, I started my YouTube platform in 2015. I was going through a really dark time. Um, some people may call this like the dark night of the soul. You know, I was still grieving the transition of my grandmother. We were like this, you know, like she had a lot to do with my spiritual journey. Very powerful indigenous woman, um, very spiritual, very insightful and at that time I was going through a really bad breakup so I'm like you know what I'm going through all of these like strange spiritual phenomena and I don't have my grandma to talk to I don't have anybody to talk to no none of my friends
friends or family members are into this. So I started my YouTube platform as like a diary, right? Like, I'm like, I'm just going to express myself, you know, as cancers, we have to like get our emotions out in some way. So that's what I did. And lo and behold, people just started to gravitate to my channel. And they're like, yo, I feel like this too. And I feel like I'm by myself as well. And then a community just started. And then, you know, it just kind of happened. My channel blew up. And here we are, you know, doing interviews with wonderful people like you. It's definitely an honor and a blessing to be in this space, man. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. That was just about getting through a dark time and yeah. speaking your feelings and finding there's an audience that resonates. And now they call you an influencer, right? You've got these huge numbers on Instagram, huge numbers on YouTube. Um, I, you know, I was checking out all your videos. And so do you feel like you're growing an empire? Yes, that's one thing that I always talk about. You know, they say if you want to go fast, you go by yourself. But if you want to go far, then you need like people around you, a strong support system. So, yes, I am building an empire. I am connecting and building with other powerful individuals like yourself who want to spread the information, who want to wake up the collective consciousness so that we can go from just being, you know, stuck in this matrix as human beings and become divine beings. Cause that's who we truly are at our core. Like we may just be having this human experience but the whole point is to like transcend this reality. Where do you get your information from? <laughs> or do you get downloads? Do you channel uh, information? Do you just know things or do you follow something in particular? Mm, to be honest, just a lot, a lot of reading. Um, a lot of reading, a lot of sitting down and listening to the stories of elders. Like elders are packed with wisdom and just being around wise people kind of growing up, absorbing that information um stories from my grandmother her gifts that was given to me because my grandmother also was an oracle and a channeler mm -hmm. uh, my mother also has the gift and then it was passed down to me so it's in my our bloodline a lot of the information too that I channel in my YouTube videos and my platform it's a lot of stuff that's not in books and it's a reason for that right like they say um, Jehudi, which is the god of wisdom, also known as Thoth or Tehudi, um, he talks about like this, this place, the Akashic records, you know, like where it has all of the information throughout time, space, past, present, future. And, you know, it's not a physical place. You have to either astrally go there or spiritually go there. And it's a reason for that because certain information wasn't supposed to just be for people who couldn't handle it, right? Because people could utilize magic or things like we're talking about on this platform for evil. But yes, I do channel, um, I am an oracle. I channel with higher dimensional beings as well as the dead, right? Um, it takes different energy to channel these different beings because it's different like kingdoms, different realms and things of that nature. Was that ever scary for you or just has always been so natural? Um, I'll be honest, it was kind of scary. When I was little, I used to like see these really like scary looking beings that like had scary faces, look like demons. Um, and then as I got older and I started to read up more and meditate on it, I realized what those demons were. Like we all have angels and demons and not all demons are bad. Like they're kind of like the guard dogs standing in front of the door, protecting you from, let's say, tapping into things that you may not necessarily be ready for. Like a lot of my clients, they tell me that when they first started meditating, they would see like these scary images or these demonic faces. And what those really are, is just like the guardians protecting that doorway to make sure that you're ready to receive that wisdom that's coming. That's why in a lot of um, cultures, you will see them have like these scary masks that's painted outside the doors. They say it's to scare off or ward off like evil spirits, right? 
So I started to like see these things. I would tell my grandmother, my grandmother would be like, well, just pray or just say a prayer or say this psalm. Um, and it worked. And that's how I realized like the book of Psalms in the Bible is nothing but like a grimoire. It's a spell book. Okay. Like you can do tons of things with the book of Psalms. Um, and that's how I learned that words are spells. So I be mindful of what I say, because I know that my words create my reality ultimately. Okay, that was very cool. What do you mean by that? When you say the book of Psalms is like a book of spells, how can somebody for good, for themselves, for positive, how can they use the book of Psalms? What would you recommend? Well, one of my favorite go-to Psalms is Psalm 23 because it's good for protection. It's also good for psychic power. If you want to recall your dreams, my grandmother will always say, say Psalm 23 before going to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll make your dreams more vivid, more lucid, and even help you with astral projecting. Um, and when I was younger, they had this thing called the hag riding you, or some people may call it sleep paralysis. And it happens a lot with children who are very spiritually inclined because these being succubi, incubi spirits will try to leech off of young children because they're so innocent and their aura is still kind of forming itself. So it doesn't really have a form of protection as it should. And every night this witch would come to me, hold me down. I couldn't scream, I couldn't move, it was terrifying. Until one day I ran to my grandmother, I started crying. I'm like, grandma, like there's this thing that just keeps coming to me when I'm sleeping and it just holds me down. And she says, okay, that's the witch riding you, just say Psalm 23. I said Psalm 23, that witch ain't never come back, okay? So that's how I know that it's power in the Psalms. Wow. You know, when I was a kid, I never talk about this. I used to hate going to sleep because yeah. I saw things and witches were real big for me as a kid. And I knew I couldn't let my arm go over the bed because um, I felt that I was going to be dragged under. Um, mm -hmm. But this stuff was so terrifying to me as a kid. And it felt way beyond monster in the closet imagination. It felt really real. And you're talking about stuff I have never thought about since then. I never even considered that it could have been real. A lot of people, a lot of people go through it until like you speak about it, just like you said, and they'll be like, well, you know, I had that same experience. I didn't know other people was going through this too. And it's a very common thing. Mm. Yeah. You should do a whole course on the Psalms. I think it would be really interesting. I'll go. That's a good idea. You know what? I probably should do that. Yeah, because I mean, if that's a spell book and there's so many of them, it'd be great you know, to learn some really powerful ones to help us at different times. I would love that. So I want to talk about money. I've got this great quote from you, which is, money is nothing more than energy. If people took the time to invest in studying the energetic vibration and frequency of money, they could master it and attract it whenever they please. I want to talk with you about that quote, mastering money and the science of getting rich. What is it? <laughs> oh, so human beings have this thing where they feel like if they have money, then, you know, they've made it. They're successful. Like, that's the goal. And at one point in time, I used to feel like that, too. You know, we're taught that since we're young, you know, like the amount of money you have represents like your status. But as I've delved deeper into my spiritual journey, my guides, they would tell me, like, listen, slow down. Don't do things for the money. The money is just like the after effect or the tool to allow you to do the things that you want to do. If you focus on the goal that you truly want, then the money will come naturally. And I'm going to give you an example, right? People think that they want money, but what some people really want is freedom, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want to be tied down to work and just working just to pay bills and mortgage and rent. People want to travel the world. People want to have that luxurious experience. People want to feel like royalty, right? And so when you focus on like the end goal, instead of just the money itself, you normally usually get it. And 
it's just also like, okay, if you chase money, it's going to run away from you, you know? So sometimes you have to have this mindset, like, you know what? I, I am not wanting these things. I already have it. I speak it into existence, right? Like I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am successful. I make X amount of money um, a, a month, a year. Like you have to speak it in present tense because the subconscious mind does not understand the past or the future. It's only understanding now, right? So I heard this quote a while ago, um, from someone on YouTube and they were saying that you have to look at your higher self as like this all seeing eye or an eagle eye up in the sky and it can see everything. It can see the future. It can see the past and it sees everything is happening now. And what you're doing is you're talking to that higher self or that eye and you're seeing, I see myself having that mansion. I see myself having, you know, taking those luxurious trips. I see myself having that family or whatever it is you want. Get that book published, be a bestseller, anything. You just have to know and believe and see it yourself, right? You know that quote they always say when we were kids, like, oh, if you can, if you can dream, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. And it used to sound so cheesy back then when you young, like, oh, y'all just saying that to big up our head. But now it's like, oh, no, there's actually a science to that. And it's one of the it's the number one principle in the Kabbalion, which is an excellent book. And it talks about the law of mentalism. All is mind. The universe is mental. And once you understand that, you're like, yo, this reality that I have, everything is just really in my mind. So that's why people who tend to focus on a negative all the time, they always complain, they're never grateful, they choose to focus on the bad instead of the good, what happens? They're amplifying that energy, right? They're creating that reality for themselves. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Have you ever struggled with money? And as a personal story, how did you turn it around? Yes. So... I did struggle with money. I actually grew up in poverty, right? Like that was my my roots. I have humble beginnings. And I feel like that was a part of my journey, you know, um, growing up in Four Green Projects, growing up in the slums, like kind of looking around myself. And I realized I'm like, I don't want to be in this space when I grow up. And I always remember telling myself, like, I want to get out of this. You know, my grandmother was working towards getting me and our family out. And I saw how much of a hard worker she was. And like, I always say, like, she's one of my biggest influences ever. And so like being in that space of poverty and seeing how hard, you know, it is, especially as women, like we're not really built to struggle and work hard it like it shuts down our feminine energy and it makes us step into our masculine and it feels very uncomfortable for us and that's why a lot of the times when you see women that's more so embodying the majority of their masculine energy instead of the feminine or not finding balance they tend to be very rigid they tend to like age quickly um and also it shuts down like your sexual power right it doesn't make you as attractive anymore versus women who are just embodying that feminine flow being in that yin energy but what I've learned is that you know I don't want to go back to that space so I started learning more about how money works understanding financial literacy you know doing my money magic and manifestations and stuff like that so it's working okay and I'm grateful for it speaking of money magic I watched one of your videos where you talked about the 16 pennies in the rum and the four corners and pop Allegba and Allegra. And I, um, I did it. In fact, I watched it on a Monday. So I was like, well, this is awesome because she says, do it on a Monday night. Like I'm down, it's happening. And so that night I went out with my little rum, and my 16 pennies. Like the biggest thing for me was figuring out when I get to the four corners and I'm done, how do I go a different way? That's all I could, I could think about in order to get back home, but I made it work. I took a really nice long walk afterwards. It was kind of cool. Like I loved the whole thing and people have to watch a YouTube video to see it. Um, I love the whole thing about singing down the street. I made up my own song 
Nice. <laughs> I love the idea. Like we do that here sometimes in our house with cactus. We'll take a spirit and we will, um, I think often we'll use whiskey. I don't really drink uh, alcohol. I drink wine, but not alcohol. And we'll do it with a cactus and we'll thank them and then also spray them from our mouth. And it's, mm. it's really nice. It's really honoring. So I loved the ritual. It was super fun. Have you created anything? Or do you know anyone who's created anything really magical by doing the 16 pennies? Well, first, I want to just mention the thing you said about the cactus. That's really interesting. I've never heard about that before. So I want to look into that or probably even try that. I know cactus are really good for like protection, um, warding off bad energy. I keep them by my windows to keep out, you know, lingering spirits. So you're going to have to tell me more about that probably later because I want to check that out. Um, and I was going to ask you, actually, like when you did the 16 penny ritual, like, have you noticed anything change? Because a lot of people, there's testimonials in the comment section, even people that were skeptical and don't believe in none of this stuff. They was like, listen, let me tell you something. I don't believe in nothing, but I was at a really bad place. So I was desperate and I tried it. And oh, my God, like my freaking loans just like they forgave my student loans out of nowhere and I never paid a penny towards it okay some people were just telling me like this miraculous things was happening for them and they just they knew that it was divine intervention like there was no coincidence cool oh my gosh all right so it's been only been a day and a half and <laughs> what had like a lot actually happened today in fact there is a grant. I also sing. So I'm in a band called Lions of Lyra, like the planet. And we do this really medicine is healing music. And uh, so we're becoming a nonprofit and applying for a grant. And I have for over a month, it has been so impossible to get into the back end of this grant. And I have tried everything and called everybody and even called the IRS to get help with our EIN number, like really I've been very persistent considering. And you know what? I woke up this morning and went, I have to let go. I just mm -hmm. have to let go because this is not working out. I've tried everything for a month and it's just detracting. And about an hour before I got on with you, my cell phone rang and she introduced herself and she was from the grant program. And I'm like, okay, hi, how awesome that you call me. And she said, yeah, yeah, I understand you've been having trouble. I'm sorry, it's taken me so long to get back to you, but, and we worked together and she was helping me and I was just, I had a laugh. But it's like, literally I got to the end of my rope, I gave it up and what are the odds that out of nowhere, cause you know, the grants close, they're very deadline oriented and it's coming up. So she called. And another thing that happened, which was um, really a great coup for me, and I'm very excited about is, out of nowhere, I heard from Dr. Stephen Greer's team. And they asked me, like, rather quickly, it, I'm looking at the date, like, in two weeks, can he come on the show? My show gets booked, you know, four or six months in advance. And I'm working it out because it's Dr. Greer, and we're going to be talking about UFOs, and I'm a hell yeah. <laughs> so I was like, that is such abundance, you know? to be able to have that conversation. So those two things alone, um, really very exciting. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I'm happy that happened for you. Congrats. It worked fast. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Like, and thank you for that ritual. I would totally do this again. Um, so let's go a little deeper into this about the science of money and the law of attraction. How can we multiply our wealth? How can we eliminate debt and elevate to a financial level that we really prefer to be at? Mm. Well, first of all, you have to have a goal in mind because if you're just aiming at nothing, then you'll get nowhere. And I always tell people, especially if you have a business, like set some type of goals. How much money do you want to acquire from selling these books, selling these products? Um, how many clients do you want a day, a month, a year? You know, like just and don't don't, you know, make your number so small, like, you know, dream big. Go for the stars. At least you'll hit the moon. And I, that's the number one place to start at. It's like visualization having intention, knowing what you want, 
planting the seeds, working with the seasons and the, and the, the astral bodies, the heavenly bodies, like the moon. You know, a lot of people know the moon for being like working with like um, feminine energy, magic, uh, but the moon is also good for money. Like Mondays is synchronized with the moon. So work with that moon energy, start planning your intention during the new moon, and then watch as the moon grows to full, like pay attention to the synchronicities that happen. Because in magic, they say in three days, you get a sign. In three weeks, you see movement. And in three months, you'll get definite results. So the power of three. Okay, new moon, have <laughs> specific goals. And um, that's interesting because I know you teach moon magic. So mm -hmm. is it just money or is it deeper than money when you work with the moon? No, it's, it's deeper. You're thinking about the energy of money itself. That's why they call it currency. It's a current, right? And when you start to look at everything, it's just energy and you study the energy itself. You're like, okay, you know, if you take money and let's say, I'm gonna make this example, right? Like, let's look at money like water. If, if you have water that's not moving and it's just still in the puddle, it's going to get, you know, rancid and dirty and all types of weird like bugs and things is gonna grow in it, right? Now, think about when water is flowing in the river, you know, it's fresh and it's vibrant, the energy, the currency of it is so alive. Same thing with money. And that's why they say you shouldn't hoard money or just store it and not doing anything with it. Money is supposed to be shared. It's supposed to keep being passed on instead of being fearful and holding it to yourself. Invest in yourself. Utilize your money to grow your empire, grow your business, um, invest in your health, your wellness, your mind, your body, your spirit, because the best investment you can ever make is in yourself. When you take care of yourself, everything outside of you starts to work itself out too. But when you notice when you don't take care of yourself, then everything around you is gonna fall apart. Just like in feng shui, you mm -hmm. notice that whenever you have a messy house, right? Um, you have messy thoughts, you can't really think, which is why like that show Hoarders, I could never, like <laughs> I've seen one episode and I went crazy. <laughs> I'm like, how can these people live like this? Like I can only imagine what's going on in their mind. Yeah. So I always tell people like, if you want to know what's going on with somebody and they head, like go to their house, look at they, look how they keep their place because that's a reflection of what's going on inside here. Yeah. I've heard the same about someone's car. Mm. Look at how they keep their car on the outside and especially on the inside. You know, is it all banged up on the outside? Do they have shit strewn everywhere? You know, old cups and papers and you know how kempt is it or unkempt and all of that and yeah it's so such a good point like very much like feng shui how you keep your house how you keep your insides is really important yes indeed and, and again, that car that goes with the law of correspondence as above so below as within so without However you feel about yourself is going to reflect on your external reality. Are there ever days, Conjure Queen, where you're like, man, I need some inspiration. I really need someone to come in here and give me a little boost. I'm usually good, but not so good today. Hmm. Yes, I have those days. I think we all have those days like this. There's no possible way where you are in a good mood 24 seven. I mean, we're having a human experience. We're supposed to go through all different types of emotions. Whenever I feel like I'm overwhelmed, right? Like this is one of the reasons why I always say like, have a strong support system, have people around you that can be empathetic with you, who can pick you up when you're feeling down. You shouldn't be the only person in your social circle, that's the go-to friend. Everybody comes to you with, your, with their problems because then, you know, who do you talk to when you got problems? Every therapist needs a therapist and I have a therapist too. And I always tell people like, you know, uh, a heart surgeon can't perform surgery on himself, right? Like he still needs to go to the doctor too. 
So we just have to have that in mind as spiritualists, as healers, that it's okay to go to others to get help. Mm, Yeah. And so we've talked about moon magic. What about dragon magic? I love dragons. It sounds like you do too. I do love dragons. Dragons are very powerful. They're very, very, very wise. Um, And the funny thing is they don't really vibe with everybody. You know, it's a very strong energy. And I always tell people when you approach these mythical creatures or these ancient beings, you know, they just live probably one step from a dimension from us. So they're very close to us, but they just don't reveal themselves to everybody, right? dragons when we talk about dragon magic right well the dragon is also represented by the kundalini energy like that spiritual awakening the serpents right um when we want to work with dragons i mean me specifically everybody has let's say you work with a dragon you summon a dragon and a particular dragon will give you its magical name Because we all have names, the names that we were given at birth as a human being, and then a spiritual name that we have that's given to us, but not spoken in the material world. You should never give that name to anybody, and you should never tell anybody a dragon's name, because it can be used against you. Just like in like Haitian voodoo or in um, Ifa, right, um, African spiritual religion, they tell you, you know, you don't tell somebody who your Ori is, which is like your head spirit. You don't tell nobody who your Mette is, which is the same thing as like your head guardian. Because what somebody can do is if somebody has ill intentions for you, they can do a ritual, they can put your spirit in a jar, and then they can turn you into a zombie. And they have a movie about that. I think it's called Serpent in the Rainbow or something like that. But stuff is very real. Very real. You know, you talk about dragon energy. That was interesting that they're akin to serpents. I've never heard that before. And earlier you mentioned sexual power. Uh, Yeah, which I love, by the way. And I know, because I've looked into, I'm sort of fascinated actually by sexual power and way deeper than Tantra, like Temple of Isis kind of stuff, you know, Hathor and all of that, the original honoring of women who were the goddesses back then and were sexual initiates. Mm -hmm. And they used the serpents to go up the chakras. And as they were having, uh, when, when they were being pleasured and as they were getting closer and closer to orgasm, they used this. And then the serpent's heads met in the pineal gland. And it was a time of amazing creation and manifestation. Like you could literally put something into creation at that time. So for instance, a modern day, if you were having sex and getting close and you saw the serpents, you allowed the energy to rise up your channel and saw the serpents go through the chakras, meet the heads, meet in the pineal gland. And then you could say $15,000 by this Friday or by the end of the month or whatever you're creating. Yeah. And I'm wondering when you talk about the dragons, is that somewhat similar to these serpents, this use of this animal magic? Well, when we think about dragons, they have different types of dragons. Like, you know, there's dragons that bring wealth and luck. There's certain dragons that are meant to protect you and ward off evil. There's dragons that can teach you wisdom and knowledge. Like there's different races or different types of dragons. And also when you think about like the story of dragons, what do they do? They breathe fire, um, the breath of life, right? Um, And what is fire? Like fire is once again, like they talk about like that sexual passion, that that energy. Um, When you tap into your dragon magic, And even like in the Bible, right? Like I'm not super religious, but a lot of these religious texts, they're really talking about metaphysics, right? They hide the esoteric power in it. Um, But for those who have eyes to see, they can read and say, okay, they talk about like the flying serpent. The flying serpent is the dragon. They talk about, um, what else they said about the, you know, like um, the Adam and Eve with the serpent, the serpent came whispered into Eve's ear, right? And, And you always hear stories about the serpent and women. The serpent didn't go to Adam. 
he went to Eve. He's the woman is like the, the gatekeeper of knowledge. That's why they say in the tarot, right? The high priestess are said, you know, she stands before the veil and she's like, hey, you can't come past here unless you are worthy and you've done the work and you know thyself and you have wisdom. Then only can you pass through her. So you have to pass through the woman, the gatekeeper, before you get to the, the true magic, right? And you have classes, you have online classes on spirituality and magic, yes? Yes, I do. I have tons of classes on my website on moon magic, on um, spiritualism and mediumship, teaching people how to open up their psychic centers and channel and learn how to communicate with these divine beings, as well as communicating with the dead, which is necromancy. That's what we do when we talk to our ancestors, have an ancestor veneration class, because they say that your ancestors are like the front line and center spirits that you want to work with before you start working with deities and gods and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and I, what, I also have like business classes too, teaching women about how to utilize their spiritual powers to manifest better business finances and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when you talk about lineage because so many people, not everybody, but so many people have lineage ancestors that is just plagued with, you mm -hmm. know, problems and wars and refugees and, you know, my people, I'm Jewish, you know, running from country to country, never feeling safe, uh, thinking you're going to pro prospering, thinking you're well and accepted. And then all of a sudden that country turns on you and, you know, you have to run away again. And, you know, Holocaust survivors, all of that. So I'm sure the same with you and many of the people listening. So when you turn to them, how do you engage with that when there's so many issues that have preceded you, so much damage? Well, that's what we call like generational curses, right? Like we are our ancestors and people have this misunderstanding that once a person transitions from this physical reality into a spirit that they automatically elevate and all of their pains and worries are just left behind. But that's not necessarily true. The power of ancestor veneration is healing your ancestors, right? Talking to them healing those pains by giving offerings, by burning ancestor money, um, by just working on yourself because you are your ancestors ultimately. They're your blood, they're your bone, like they're everything inside of you. And you can tap into your ancestors by activating that dormant DNA within you. Whatever, like let's say you had an ancestor that knew how to, I don't know, channel gods. You have the power to do that. An ancestor that was really good at archery or hunting, um, fishing or dancing. You have that within you. It's all about tapping into that. So when we work with our ancestors, not only are we healing ourselves, but we're healing them and they're teaching us because they've already been initiated into the spiritual realm. So they're actually telling us like, hey, look, We've been dead. Let me tell you what's going on over here on the other side. This is what you got to do. This is how you prepare yourself. This is how you elevate. This is what they got going on over here. So that way, when you do transition, it's not such a scary process because you've already been told. They already told you what it's like over there. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's so cool listening to you. You're so, you're so <laughs> hip. It's really great. <laughs> someone, yeah, without all the, you know, stuff I'm used to hearing, the way you lay it out is um, just really now. I appreciate it so much. You talk about also, Conjure Queen, that, 10, that people use about 10% of their brain, but that you say the ancients knew techniques that would unlock 100% of the brain and that unlocking 100% of the brain gave them the power to do things that today would be considered miracles. Can you mm. give us an insight? First of all, who were these ancients? Well, we talk about them all the time. Like um, these people like Jesus, right? Like let's use him for an example. Jesus was actually studying in the temples of ancient Egypt, which is also known as Kemet, right? Like they say that Jesus like took this huge sabbatical. He just went away for a long time, went into the wilderness. And they always talk about even... Um, What's his name? Muhammad or 
can't think of the guy's name. But Abraham? You know, he went into the, Abraham, they had a whole bunch of different names, but he went into the wilderness and then um, he was seeing a burning bush and the bush talked to him, right? They, what they're basically telling you is like a lot of these, these religious figures were mystics and they knew the ancient science that ancient Egypt taught, ancient Mesopotamia. Even over here in North America, they say that they found pyramids and ancient um, mummies down in like the caves that predate even the pyramids in Egypt. Like stuff gets deep. But the reason why I'm bringing that up is because they studied these sciences, which taught you like, yo, we are literally stars and we have the ability to tap into these sciences, but because we're drinking fluoridated water and because we're breathing in chemicals of the chemtrails mm. and the foods that we're eating is slowing down our digestive system and our metabolism is literally dumbing us down to the point where our senses are only cut off to using five. Well, we have hundreds of senses and more than seven chakras. And, you know, the ancients would just teach you like, hey, there's mantras you can do. There's certain yoga poses that you can do. There's certain rituals and potions and things you can mix together, certain herbs like um, psychedelics, you know, psychedelic mushrooms, they open up your third eye. They make you see reality for what it really is. Ayahuasca, all of that. Mm -hmm. Like they, they say that these plants were put here from the star people, aka oh. UFOs, aka aliens. But when you channel these beings from beyond Earth, they'll tell you, like, well, you're not from Earth. You know, you actually come from this system here and you were just dropped off, right? Like we came here to kind of migrate and um, help the planet because we were supposed to colonize. Well, not colonize, but um, create civilizations and life here and kind of be the caretakers of the planet. Wow. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, yeah. And <laughs> I, <was> <laughs> I have experience with that, which you talk about was the plants that were brought here from, from, yeah, they're pretty um, amazing and spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I've never understood people are afraid of it. I understand not everyone's called to it. I honor that. But I never understood the fear because it's natural. It's a plant. How could it hurt mm -hmm. you? Not a chemical. And for sure, mushrooms, there is some of the deepest, most profound, divine spiritual experiences yeah. I've ever had. Uh, has changed my life uh, every time I do it. Uh, I love that you bring that up. So what are... Are there specific ways that people who are listening, specific secrets that could unlock the power of our mind beyond what you just named? Because you talk about potions and mantras, and if we're called to it, ingesting these plants to open ourselves up, what else can we do? Hmm. So one of the tools that I, well, it's a few tools that I actually give a lot of my subscribers is taking in liquid chlorophyll, right? Taking liquid chlorophyll, um, taking in monatomic gold and also collodial silver, okay? Now, what these do is over time, you'll start to notice that your, your mind will start to expand. Your dreams will become more vivid. Your psychic powers will start to turn on. Right. So some people may notice like some symptoms of like feeling lethargic, feeling a little fatigue at first. But what's happening is that your body is literally healing itself from all the poisons and the toxins that it's used to taking in. And that's what the liquid chlorophyll does is it purifies and starts to cleanse the blood. Remember, the blood is the power. The blood is the ashe. The blood is the ancestors. Okay, so you're cleaning that out. And once your body starts to clean itself, your mind gets clear as above, so below, as within, so without. And then that's when you start to really turn on and be like, okay, I'm clear now. This is what I need to start doing. This is the deities or the spirit guides that I need to work with, right? Like they're here to help us along our way. Um, but yeah, those are the, some tools that you can use, practical tools, so that you can turn your DNA on, because a lot of our DNA is sleeping. Right. They've called it junk DNA, and we now know there's nothing junk about it. 
Exactly. And before I forget to um, people ask, like, what are some good brands to use? Because they got a lot of like crappy stuff out here that don't really work and they'll charge you an arm and a leg. But I actually have an Amazon store that I have like connected to my website as well as on my social platforms. And I always tell people like, if you go to the Amazon store, I have like the licks, um, a list of elixirs that you can take for your body, even before all of this, like, you know, hysteria and pandemic stuff came up. I was telling people like things that they can take to keep their body clean and to keep out sickness. I have not been sick for years. And when I tell people that they'd be like years, I'm like, yeah, we're not meant to get sick like that. Like, you know, three or four times a year, that's not normal. That means that you have built up mucus in your body. And Dr. Sabi, which is, you know, he was a healer, man. Like he was out here teaching about natural healing and remedies before it became popular. And he was telling people that, look, you know, follow an alkaline diet fasting for some time to cleanse the body out, taking these elixirs and stuff to heal your DNA, your blood. And I would just want to go over this again, because there's one I missed. So I know you said liquid chlorophyll, colloidal silver, and then there was something gold. What was Monatomic, that? monatomic gold. Monatomic. Mm-hmm. What is that powered gold. Yeah, gold is, you know, a very good conduit of energy. And that's why royalty and the ancients, like, we're so fascinated with gold. You even hear about the story about the Anunnaki coming and making the, you know, the humans mine for gold. Why do we hear about gold so much, right? Like, it's power in it. So imagine putting that into your body, activating your DNA, turning on and becoming an even more powerful conduit of energy. Mm, I love the sound of that. I love gold. I'm into it. <laughs> cool. All right. So we'll be going to your Amazon store and checking those out. Um, I know you mentioned that you channel. And in your recent channelings, connections to your spirit guides, Conjure Queen, have you been made aware of any events to come, anything that's really important to know, any changes or any, you know, pulling back the curtain about what's going on and what to be mindful of? Well, the main thing that I tell people for the latest channels I've been getting is to not get stuck in fear of what's going on around the world. It's not about being desensitized to it or ignoring what's happening. It's a simple fact that we have to start paying attention that there's a certain cycle that just keeps repeating itself and they keep creating these problems and watching our reaction and then giving us solutions, but they're not really solutions at all. It's really just a form of control. And so the only way that we truly can regain back our sovereignty is to honestly stop believing the propaganda, stand up together and unify and stop being so easily deceived and feeding into this, these stories just to keep us separated. That's what's really happening. But, you know, those who are who were once in power because they really lose in power now. And that is starting to show because they're having a lot of hiccups. OK, I think the storyline is not adding up anymore. People are starting to see through the veil like the veil is being ripped open. So it's only a matter of time, you know, until the nation falls. Just saying that, you know, before history even shows like before any great nation ever fell there was always some crazy plague mm. and what do you think this is that we're in right <laughs> right i'm i'm really with you i yeah i i'm just um i find i have to stay in a happy place my own little happy place because if i were to pay attention to this movie that they're creating in the news mm -hmm. it's movie. just it's unbelievable. And, and it, I really feel like it's created to make people feel utterly powerless, so mm. frightened and powerless that just tell me what to do, you know, losing identity, totally losing sovereignty. And, and it makes me sad, you know, that people are being manipulated like this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
you know, whenever you see that media being thrown in your face, or let's say people come up to you and they want to, you know, start fear mongering you like, oh my God, did you hear about this? What I do now is I just be like, no, I don't watch the news. Or if they try to force their beliefs on me, which is also a form of like sorcery, because, you know, advertisers do it all the time. They're consistently trying to bombard your subconscious mind with these messages, trying to intrude upon your will. And so you have to have your boundaries and be like, excuse me, no, I do not accept that into my reality. End the discussion, move on. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> yeah, boundary. I like it. Yes. Um, so so what else about any events? What What else about... What's going on? Do you see good things coming? Do you feel like this is a time when a lot of, even though it may seemingly look devastating to most people, do you feel like you said there have been plagues and things before in history when good things were to come? What kind of good things do you anticipate? Well, I mean, we're looking around at it now. Like they thought that the pandemic would like break people, but there were a lot more, you know, businesses that rose up. People started to homeschool their children and say, you know what? Like, I want to spend more time with my children. I want to educate them and teach them and be there with my family, right? Like it it brought more people together. People started realizing like, hey, you know, I don't really need this job. I could work from home. Hey, you know, so it created more like of an independent type thinking instead of having people feel so reliant and dependent upon the government or dependent upon, you know, their employer or money. Um, So I really feel like it's a beautiful time. People are learning more about investing um, investments and other mediums towards just improving themselves and creating generational wealth. Um, even more people started to dig deeper into like um, natural remedies and, you know, holistic healing methods. Like more people are getting into Reiki and chakra healing and herbalism because, you know, people got cut off from their job. They don't have health insurance anymore. They can't afford to go to the doctor. Western medicine is falling. And, you know, I tell people, unfortunately, that may not be an industry you want to invest in because I don't really see that being very successful within the next like 15, 20 years. Um, You want to invest in like, you know, holistic health, health and wellness right now. Spirituality is a multi-billion dollar business and everybody's trying to get a piece of the pie. You know, that's why they kind of trying to crack down on it saying, oh, this is not FDA approved. You can't do this. Or, you know, it doesn't work. But I mean, the proof is in the pudding. People are healing their bodies and they're realizing that nature, you know, God or spirit put everything here for us to heal ourselves. You know, there's an old Indian saying, indigenous Native American saying that says, for every sickness, there is a cure. Like, Plants were put here to help us, to heal us. And we're getting that knowledge back. And so that's what my platform is really all about. It's about bringing that ancient knowledge that was forgotten back to the people. Yeah, it reminds me, I once used to get into it with somebody uh, who was really into Western medicine and you know, had their cabinets in their bathroom full of stuff to take because if this happened, you took this. And I would say, that's silly. You know, why would you take Tums, for example, for your stomach? Have peppermint. Have peppermint with some charcoal. And they would look at me like I was crazy. (laughs) Why would you do peppermint? That's crazy. It's like, no, do you not understand where these things come from originally? Like Mm -hmm. original medicine was the plants. You eat, so go back to the original medicine. That's where the potency is. This other stuff is just... It's a very poor man's kind of imitation of trying to create the same thing, but it's doing with chemicals and it fails and gives you other symptoms. So, you know, I used to laugh, like I couldn't get through to this person. They were really intelligent, but so brainwashed into this Western medicine stuff. And I mean, when you talk to people who went to like school to be doctors or nurses, it's like they're only regurgitating what they've been taught and just like passing it on. Um, So they just haven't been trained to know about natural remedies. Most of these pharmaceutical um, medicines 
come from the herbs. They just put fillers in it to keep you addicted and keep you coming back. And it doesn't heal the body. The body can naturally heal itself. Herbs help work with your body. Pharmaceuticals yes. work against it, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, that's very hopeful, everything that you shared. That sounds good. And I like your take on how much good that the pandemic brought out in people. I, I've heard lots of people talk about oh, you know, I've gotten so spiritual and now I have time to meditate and I wrote a book and I, you know, it's amazing in a very positive way when they didn't get caught up in the fear or television, just, you know, mm-hmm. the brilliance that people created. And so if we want to tap into our cosmic consciousness, we talked about these, this dormant DNA earlier in this sacred ancient knowledge. Are there tools that we can use that help us tap into those DNA codes and activate this knowledge? Well, besides the elixirs that I gave to help turn on your DNA, I mean, there's meditation, you know, there's binaural beats, falling asleep to binaural beats before you go to sleep, put yourself in a certain vibration. Um, There's so many tools like we could go on for a very long time but you know I talk about these tools also in my workshops and classes and I'm going to be having some new workshops and classes coming up in spring so I'm excited for that and people can find you iamconjurequeen.com and also that's your handle for Instagram etc yes media platforms Mm -hmm. okay yeah well, this is Dare to Dream, Conjure Queen. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Ooh, well, I know for certain that I am ready to do more live in person events. Like coming to the Conscious Life Expo was a beautiful experience. I want to be able to network and build and connect to people like in person. It's a different type of energy when you're, you know, talking through a screen and then when you can actually like touch, feel and like feel that energy of a person right in front of you. And I feel like we need more of that, especially with everything that's just turned digital, with the whole pandemic keeping us separate. We need more community. We need more unity and connection in touch, right? Because human beings, we're tribal people anyway. So we need that community vibe. So that's the goal, you know, like I always tell people, if you want me to come to your city, your country, your state, wherever, like just hit me up, we can talk and we can set something up because I'm always with it. And I love traveling. So yeah. (laughs) And is there a ritual or a practice that you do every day that helps keep you centered, manifesting positive in really good spirits? Yes. My morning ritual every day is before I go on my phone or talk to anybody, I go into meditation and I state my intention for the day, right? Like if I have a meeting to go to or things to take care of, I send my spiritual body out mentally to do it. I visualize how everything's going to plan out. And then that way, when my physical body catches up, all of the obstacles are already moved out of the way and there's little to no resistance. Mm. Anything here at the end that you want to tell the listeners? Um, well, I would just say to not to buy into fear, to understand that you are the creator of your reality, you are the conjurer of your reality, and always understand that, you know, the power is is within you. Don't give your power away. Nobody can take your power unless you give it. So just be mindful of what you want for yourself and just know that you can achieve it, right? And At the end of the day, if you're looking for a community of people to also connect with, if you feel like a loner, an outcast, a black sheep, or you don't have friends or family that understand you, then, you know, I've created a community for people like us who can work together and build and talk and talk about these topics without feeling judged, right? So I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I'm also going to start opening up memberships for people who want to dig deeper into this and, you know, get daily inspiration and do like weekly videos where we're talking about 
um, practical ways that the ancients used to turn on your psychic powers, how to connect and talk to your ancestors and learning about divination tools and all of this, how to get out of this matrix. That's the goal. So I'm excited for that. It's going to be a good year. I feel it. I feel it. Thank you for coming on the show, Contra Queen. And I feel compelled to tell you that your grandmother is really proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. She's always with me. She's probably like here right now, just like cheering me on. I feel her. I feel her. It's... Thank you. And thanks for the work you're doing out in the world. Thank you. Thank you for having wonderful people on your platform, just sharing this light. So you are a blessing too. Thank you, Debbie. We appreciate you. Mm, thank <laughs> you. So nice. I end today's show with this quote from Buddha. You can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving for your love and affection than you are yourself. And that person is not to be found anywhere. You, yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe deserve your love and affection. Thank you so much for joining today. Subscribe and like this show and subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. Dare to Dream next week with Debbie Dashinger is featuring Dr. Stephen Farmer, a world-renowned best-selling author, psychotherapist, shamanic practitioner, and soul healer. And Dr. Farmer and I are going to be talking about his new book, Animals and Their Spirit. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Use some of the tools that you learned today from Conjure Queen so you too can start creating and manifesting your reality.